Hello everyone, welcome to episode 6 of the box office which is now open. We're at Stade de France where it's all going down in two days time. There will be tears after, well, for the next show. It's a massive weekend of rugby. With me is Brian Habana. Um, what do you mean? Tears, you... tears on this? No, 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 no. I'm just oh, saying there will be tears. We're oh, not okay. wearing French jerseys or Irish jerseys, but there will be tears. Oh, okay. Just the other way. Just, just uh, Brian, I heard you got kept up late last night. John Smith, eh? The guy like... <laughs> I know I've been traveling a lot, but he's been bouncing between continents uh, the last last couple of weeks. Yeah, he needed just a bit of regrouping. He obviously been working very hard at uh, at SSG back in South Africa, so he needed a little bit of pulling in. Um, I mean, I was <laughs> I felt very out of place this night at the Legends of World Rugby dinner uh, at the brewery. Uh, oh. I'm not quite sure. I'm, I was very grateful to David Kirk for turning down the opportunity to go and that see us still playing because I was with. Um, Come six still drop the names. Drop six the names. incredible captains, um, starting with Nick Farr Jones, 91. Then we had Francois Pina. Drop the names. Frankie yeah. Pinat. John Eels. Yeah. Mertz, just quickly. Oh, hold on, I've got to introduce Mertz, though. Hold on. Sorry, I'm not, okay, sorry, okay, I introduced okay, you and you started sorry, sorry. to speak. For, sorry. Uh, and second. <laughs> I want to hear the rest of Former All Black no. and uh, second is the second all time scorer for the All Blacks. Point scorer. Well, I, Point I, scorer. I, I do like to say third because there's Carter and then there's Daylight. And then, <laughs> and then there's the rest there are the rest of us. So. Uh, Probably third, but I'll take whatever you want to say today. Is it good to have you, Mitch? Likewise, nice to be here. Nice to be friends this week. We yeah. don't. We're not at, uh, at loggerheads. Yeah. Just, you know? just it's... some conversation we had before this. You, you got a lot of teams promoted. Uh, yeah, tell yeah, us, was... tell us. Well, I was always a people pleaser when it came to rugby, <laughs> and so I was, you know, lucky when I came to France. I chose three really good teams with good budgets, as important as Brian knows. You know, well, down at Toulon, good. particularly. Obvious, 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 In fact, obvious. I sort of paved the way for uh, the Toulon. likes of we Brian there and his teammates at Toulon. Yeah, so we, we, the Blues Brothers. You know, we had this poor little second division French team which had Victor Matfield came down, George Gregg and Anton Oliver, Esteban Losada straight from the World Cup in 2007, yep. came to French second division. So we bumbled our way through the season, got up, and then the big boys yeah, came along. Was Sonny Bill there that first season or not? Sonny Bill just arrived after that. He just wasn't after. messing around okay. with second division. You okay. Know? So okay, we okay. paved the way. But yeah, a couple of other teams racing in Bézier in France you got, got you them got, up. And you got them up also? It just continues the theme of just, you know, helping teams. I helped South Africa in 95, as you know, helped yeah. the French in 99. I did my best for them. So I'm just sort of... We heard you, you half South African or born in South Africa. Born in South Africa. Could have been South African. Could have played really, for the box. I don't fit the physical <laughs> profile of a South African, do I? So, uh, yeah, it was a bit of an anomaly, but very proud to have been born in South Africa while my father Durban. was across there. And yeah. he was in Durban playing for Berea Rovers. Okay. And, and in fact, he played for Natal against the All Blacks in uh, 1970. Okay. Wow. So uh, very proud of my South African heritage, even though... You know, we were against one another for a long time as well. It's a great history. So you use your green, you use your green, you use your green mamba, right? You use your green mamba. I, I really? used to use my green mamba, yeah. but, but I got, got it stolen. We've got, we got a surprise Sorry, for you. Ah, we've got a surprise. We've got a surprise for you. Oh. Henri South African, yeah. We've got, we got you a, a jersey just to... You well, can, again, you, can you put it on? This week, I can. I might proudly look. I, want, I don't want to cover up the fern here of the stylized... <laughs> maybe, maybe, maybe it's just the three stripes on the left. Just the three stripes. Cover the three stripes. Cover the three stripes. No branding, that's fair. They never like me anyway, these guys. We're going to need to see the box, We need to see the box. Bring it down a bit. There we go. There we go. Well, listen, it's the first South African jersey I've had other than swapping with Joel Stransky at 95 World Cup final. Well, we swapped the second jersey they got given. Okay. We were all in, you know, pretty disappointed in the changing rooms and I swapped. That stage, I didn't really care what happened. Nothing could be worse. Yeah. And got the jersey and thought, okay, gee, that feels... And for a fly half, it's not it's it's not rare for the jersey to be completely clean when you yeah. come off the field. Yeah. But Joel's was absolutely brand new. I was like, oh, gee, add, add insult to injury. I've got the reserve jersey. So How, uh, how many drop kicks were there in that game? Successful ones. Attempts. Attempts. Attempts, actually. I got one successful one. I got one successful one, and in yeah. hindsight, one I looked out, and Jonah was on his own, probably the first time in the game that he was actually on his own, but I couldn't hear. There was a fair bit of noise in the stadium. I think I probably missed five. So, no, wasn't yeah, it? Was, you missed two, didn't you? Uh, oh, one, yeah, one two, and then another three. That's right. <laughs> so oh, I kept missing them. And uh, I shouldn't laugh about it, but, um, you know, Looking back, it, it really it, it helped to contribute to what became a bit of a yeah, fairy tale story. Yeah. I mean, yeah. without my missed drop goals, no Invictus movie, uh, no, no Matt Damon, <laughs> no Matt Damon, Nelson Mandela, no you know, Matt so Damon. I did my bit. <laughs> but poisoning. So obviously, <laughs> drop goal has now become a thing in professional rugby. Was it something you would have trained? Was there like sort of structure around that? I know. I mean, we didn't really do it. Like we didn't see it. 
you know, we saw Zizan Brook do it. Yeah, of course, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, the then he kicked a couple. Oh, yeah. That was insult to injury, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> I, I missed them. Where were you? And the number eight gets them. <laughs> 40, 40, 45 meters up? Look, it's a, it's a good question because, yeah, it was, I mean, we were still very amateur, amateur. even though in theory it was th- it was professional around that area. You were getting envelopes, don't worry. No, no, we know. Getting on and, you know. <laughs> envelopes. Get, getting on and practicing the drop goals and practicing the setup for it was something that certainly came in later. I could hit a drop goal, but I could miss probably more often than not. I could okay. strike it well, but not in the right direction. So it wasn't something you methodically trained, but it okay. certainly is now. Well, so in guys. that week, you would have trained like sort of set phase around how you get that drop goal or, or um, not? Can no, we, no, we didn't specifically train okay. that, that that kind of structure, the setup. But All at right. the same time, it's always on. It's sometimes it was supposed to be the three easiest points in the game, you know, yeah. just down yeah. the end and, and, and whack it through. And then, Ideally, when the other team doesn't know. Yeah. What I what I remember most with Joost van der Vestezen's eyes. Okay. The one so that I was right in front and missed way to the right. All I can remember was him lining up at the same time as Graham Bishop's lining up to throw yeah. me the pass. I could see these eyes boring into me. The only eyes like that on a couple of people, <laughs> Ian McIntosh had the same yeah, sort yeah, of eyes. Yeah, yeah. The Those blue eyes staring. Crazy yeah. blue yeah, eyes. Yeah. And Joost was just out of the out of the out of the uh, the traps yeah. like like a shot. Ninety five, a wonderful time though. I mean, obviously you didn't get the result, but my, a special time. It was an amazing World Cup in South Africa for yep. the first time. Amazing tournament. My first time being in South Africa, the, the country of my birth. Brian, you in the stands, eh? 95, yeah. Young fellas, thanks for rubbing that <laughs> in too, mate. <laughs> but nice, though. good good times. Look, eh? there's a great history between uh, the All Blacks and, and the Springboks, and, and that has become part of, p- part of that yeah. rich history, which, you know, proud to have been a part of it. Not necessarily, obviously, proud of my performance or the, 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 the result, regardless of, of what it did for the Rainbow Nation and stuff like that. There's a bigger picture at play, obviously. Yeah, yeah. But, you know, still immensely disappointing to lose a game of that magnitude. Yeah. But just to quickly... The, po- the poisoning. Let's talk about that. <laughs> <laughs> yes, well, um, uh, look, it's something I don't like to, to, to talk much at as an issue. We had a, uh, a period during the week in the lead-up to the final where a whole bunch of the players or the tourists, uh, including our staff, got got sick all of a sudden. A very rapid weight loss program. I could yeah. probably <laughs> do with going through it again. And uh, yeah, look, we that was a couple of days out from the game. We did as much as we could to to manage that. We we're a very fit team. We got to the game feeling like we'd we'd sort of recovered from it, and we ran into a South African team that knocked us over at every opportunity where other teams throughout the tournament hadn't done that. We'd been able to control mm. the tempo and everything. So. Yeah, look, I, I hesitate to say anything about that because it always sounds like you can be making excuses. Yeah. South Africans will be screaming. New Zealanders, by the same token, if I say, oh, yeah, no, nothing happened at all, they'll be screaming and throwing stuff at the mm. at the screen. So, look, yeah, we, we had a little bit of an incident. They did some private investigation work afterwards. Oh, did they? Came okay, up with yeah. the name of uh, a, a supposed employee of the hotel who'd been only there for two days and then disappeared. Um, oh, wow. Oh. So, look, that's... that's Breaking that's, news. Look, Breaking I'm glad news. it's just passed into sort of folklore now. Yeah. Yeah, hopefully we can talk about it, be friends. A lot of water has gone under the bridge since then. And like I say, I'm not going to be one who ever says, because of the, the fact we all got pretty sick one night of the week that it that ruined our chances. What So in that week, what night of the week was it? Do you remember? It was Thursday. 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 And Thursday. it was, look, the only effect it could have had, maybe not on the other guys, but on Friday, I had scheduled in a drop kicking practice session, yeah. which I uh, which I wasn't able to get to, unfortunately. Um, so, but, but there's no way that could have affected the game, surely. Yeah. <laughs> but also, I mean, that was on that. So obviously we had Susie, but and I know we're going to preview this Africa France game, but yeah. there's a lot of talk about there being a little bit like revenge, right? So the French was pretty angry about that '95 semi-final, the rain-drenched one. Oh, where it's not popping up now for this game. I mean, I, I got into town this morning and like a lot of people were like, oh, c'est la revenge, c'est la revenge. Oh wow, I'm okay. Like, I'm like, guys, mm. we would not have had the Madiba France Opino moment. What are you talking about, la revenge? So that they all oh, the you still needed me to work for you in the no, final. You still needed me to look so after. So one yeah. guy that was involved back <laughs> thanks then. Thanks for the World Cup. <laughs> thanks, Wes. Thanks, Hart. <laughs> don't leave me hanging. Thank you. Don't leave me hanging. That could have been awkward. That could have been awkward. That could have been awkward. Start me on public humiliation <laughs> from Twickenham. <laughs> oh, yeah. um, you were on the phone. That's commentating. Uh, Influencer. Uh, He's got to finish his story. But at France, a lot of the French are now talking about like the revenge of that, and a guy that was there. And is as a player is now in the capacity as coach, Bowen Galtier, in '95. Oh, gee, I don't think they take it back to '95. Yeah, so well, if that team wasn't born then. Man. That generation does does talk about it. The Benazi try that they yeah. were convinced he was over. Well, they were left yeah. hand side in the rain. In the rain. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I was I was there. An hour and a half you, delay. Oh, were you there also? Yeah, we had a family family journey down to Derbs. Hour and a half delay. So. There's so much from 95 that is now coming out again, right? Mm. Like, uh, Susie, um, 
the French, how how is that gonna inspire them? We're talking Wolf revenge, wow, oh, revenge of '95. Here we go. Long memories, eh? yeah. oh, geez, that sounds like that <laughs> Lions tour that ended in a draw in New Zealand in 2017, and apparently there's going to be a decider in 2029. That's a long time to wait for the decider. No, just just before we move on to the France South Africa game, you got to do that free state rendition. Oh, I never knew so well. Please, I'm dying. Please, can we find some footage of that? I'm pretty sure Rassi was involved in that where they got the team. He was still playing. They got the team late 90s and, and the Freistart had a had a, t- a team rugby song that they sort of broadcast and I it was something like, you know, and everything is going to be all right. <laughs> we, we won the curry cup. And oh my goodness, it is some of the best cringy, apart from that moment just now, the best cringy footage you will ever see, that song. If anyone's got hold of it from, uh, from Bloemfontein, it'd be great to see it. Especially for Rassi now, you know, he's been been celebrated for a success, yeah, guiding yeah, South Africa yeah, to the, the world, you know. Always good to take uh, take bring, successful bring up, people down a peg or two. Bring down the feet, bring down the level, right? <laughs> Brian, let's talk, let's talk about this weekend. Uh, France, nervous? So, just, he was. I am, so I'm confidently nervous, which I think is a good place to be in, right? Yeah. You were looking at the four teams and everyone's talking about lopsided section of the draw, this and that, and yes, the top four teams in the world are playing a quarterfinal this weekend against yeah. so then two are going to go out. They would have to play each other anyway, right? So yeah. if you lose in a quarterfinal or semifinal, you're still losing. I think, and I'm not saying disrespect to the other side of the draw, this must almost be favorable for this side of the draw for a final, right? Because yeah. you're the, looking at a semifinal. The intensity of the game. The intensity of, that, yeah. of the next round is maybe a little bit less, but it is a knockout game. So quietly confident, but really is, and I want to say across the board, four quarterfinals, that is probably too tight to call. Yeah. Like all of them, like literally all of them are too tight to call. Ireland, number one team in the world, have been setting... You know, setting the precedent for the last 18 months. Yeah. 17 games successfully on the trot that I haven't lost. So everything against him, haven't progressed for a quarter final. DuPont well, starts, right? I reckon DuPont starts. So looking well, yeah, at the social yeah. media stuff, DuPont he's starting. Starts. Yeah, no idea. Honestly, you, you never starts. know with the French. I, I would have <laughs> thought maybe... To, yeah, if he's if he's if he's good enough to be on the bench, he's good yeah. enough to start, isn't he? So. But also with, the in- so with that injury, so obviously there's going to be an extra 9,000 eyeballs and TV cameras potentially on him throughout the game. But there was a... It's already to talk. Uh, yeah, shot to the head is a red card. So, it's uh, it could be a surgeon sitting there at home watching nervously <laughs> on the TV too. <laughs> that, but also the fact that there was a clip in the week of training and he was not wearing a scrum cap or a mask and, and a had a massive yeah. collision. He yeah. bumped one of the French you know, guys over. Yeah. So he looks good to play, which I'd rather have someone that is potentially injured to start because I'd rather take him off because if he comes with the bench and then gets injured, injured then you're in trouble. Then yeah. you're in trouble. So... But he is superhuman, let's be honest. They uh, might have inserted some titanium or tungsten, Kryptonite, something Kryptonite, like that, some, and they're just putting the mask on as a bit of a, as is a, that a so so good, Yeah. And if it's magnetic, I mean, what you want to go out on the field is big old magnets. <laughs> <laughs> Stop them from getting to the malls. And that's, I, don't know, I don't even know if titanium is magnetic, sorry. But, but the, the impact of the crowd also, we've heard about, you know, they the call it simulation, you know. Obviously, the French crowd, very loud. You, I mean, we've seen it. Mm. How does that affect the game, though? You know, I mean, they're quite a knowledgeable crowd also. You've got line speed. You know, the crowd starts all of a sudden. They start whispering and booing. Yeah. Every time you come up quickly, a French player goes down. You know, the crowd starts whistling yeah. and all of that. It's, it's, it's massive pressure. Well, it's only massive pressure when it gets thrown on the big screen, right? Yeah. <laughs> so not you know, of the of the eighty. Well, the thousand. big screen went off last. Remember last year, the, yeah. the big screen in went the off in Marseille. The yeah. velodrome with a try that yeah. we didn't, uh, didn't get to see. So... Is, and load is shedding. Load shedding. I mean, <laughs> for those that don't know, load shedding is a real thing. Mitch, you're not load shedding, is it? No. I don't know what much. any sort of cheating so, is. <laughs> load it's been shedding. ages load since shedding. I've hung around McCaw. Uh, he is, so I saw him last night. So we haven't got back. I want to ask about Don Eels and yourself. Kicking contest. Who do you reckon wins? Oh, you will win. Me. <laughs> I can't lose to a tight forward kicking. I think John Eels would say that graciously. Whether or not it's true, I don't know. I think, look, I think overall he, he kicked that amazing one in Wellington to, yeah. to win the to win the Bluesley Cup match okay, against yeah. us. Stepped up and clutch after he's been pushing hard in the scrums all day and winning line out ball and stuff like that. I wouldn't take him on in the line out or the scrum or anything else for that matter. <laughs> but uh, I'd have a go yeah. at kicking. I reckon I might just edge. No, it. I think I think you'd be, I'd I back you on. Not the, these the, days. He's still in good shape. He could kick him now. I couldn't do <laughs> it now. No <laughs> way. If we were to just throw someone out in the second row that we'd potentially want to see kicking at poles, who do you reckon? Achievers. Anyone? Oh, current day or, or no, current day? This current group of oh, players. I was going to say Bucky's. No, the no, Bucky's are that. Could you imagine the ball? Could be the only time you see the ball deliberately fall over, the ball deliberately Buc- fall over <laughs> five times with him coming at it. Although Bucky's was a fly off at school. Impossible. Oh, Bucky's was a fly off until standard eight. Sixteen years old, he was still a fly off. Impossible. 
That's a like that's a honeyball style <laughs> fly half, isn't it? Like I, that's that's what the only time in my life I'd contemplate volunteering to go in the Fords. Yeah, <laughs> but to, uh, just the the mental aspect of kicking, the the pressure. I mean, you line up a kick opening game. What's going? Can you hear the crowd? You feel it? How do you get your mind? How do you get focused? Everyone's a bit different, but I think they're. Uh, Clearly, they're going to be a lot of similarities. going to be important this weekend. I, I loved it. I enjoyed yeah. having a buzz. I enjoyed having noise yeah. around. Sometimes it's pretty disconcerting, particularly in Ireland, where they just go completely silent, you know, or England as well, to a lesser extent, but Ireland. And and, and you're standing there at the, at the back of your run-up, sort of concentrated on the ball and the line, and suddenly it's dead silent. And you think, far out, did 50,000 people just disappear? Yeah. And it's so it can be unnerving. So I, I always preferred a lot more atmosphere and noise. I preferred, I actually enjoyed people whistling and, and booing and trying is to that, Is that you why you, you, gave the bulls you, guys the, you gave the bulls guys the finger? Eh? That was just that exuberance. Was, yeah. Now, that was, that, was, that, was, that was accumulated grief that, uh, you know, what it's like going to Pretoria. Very combative. You're, you're, you're different He's for you when you're a local guy, hero, man. and that's fine. Very combative, but very warm and engaging after the game. You know, they're at you when you go into the stadium at Pretoria. What, they're what at the, you. We're going to kill you. You're going to smash you. If you happen to win, if you're We're lucky enough to get a win there against the box or the yeah. Bulls, and you go off, and they're all still up in the box, and they're shouting, you guys are great today. You guys are wonderful. It's it's a fantastic environment. Goodness knows what, what, what made what, me what do were, that. What were they saying to you that day, though? They were proud of me after the game. I think yeah. it was the first time they'd seen me show any sort of spine on the field, you know? <laughs> so the, the Bulls supporters were actually pretty good. They were very generous about it. But, um, yeah, but goal kicking, I always enjoyed it. Because it's something that you know you can do. Yeah. It's not like somebody's throwing you and you've never kicked a ball in your life and yeah. you're now standing there trying yeah. to kick. So it's something you know you can do. It's something you look forward to doing. I certainly did. I preferred to focus on the the impending joy of getting the kick okay. rather than worry about what it'll yeah, feel like if, if you miss. It, yeah. You know, so it was just always, for me, it was just always the thrill of you're about to do something that you enjoy doing, you know. As opposed to tackling, I'm always standing there thinking, "This is for somebody else. Somebody else enjoys doing this. This is not my job." But kicking, I'm there. I'm there. Yeah, you're there. You're up there. Listen, listen we love Mitch. Can we? He's looking like a butler there. He's you can't, you can't, can't move his right arm. It's a bit heavy. Yeah, it's a bit heavy. Yeah, you can see you know, right I'll keep it there proudly. Yeah, there I, I used to have one when there I was nine go, years old. I had a, 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 a replica Springbok jersey, which okay. you know New Zealanders might say, "Hey, you know, what's the go there?" But running around out in rural yeah. Canterbury with my yeah. Bok jersey on because I'd been born in South Africa, so I'll keep this. I don't know if it was meant for that but i will <laughs> team selection for the box yep. delayed usually remember that box always announced the team mm. early this week obviously different do you think there are going to be many changes well oh, mitch you can come in here also do you think so, so changes to what to, to the Tonga, team. definitely yeah. yeah to the island game i don't see much i think marnie la box got the inside line so he'll be you reckon he'll I, start I think team, my right? biggest sort of standpoint or hesitation or nerves around this do we go Seven one six two or five three. I'm five, five three's three has been thrown around quite a bit, I, I, which I, I don't. Think I'm not sure why. Why would they go five three? So what makes you think that five three? Because I reckon Andre would need a crack. Yeah. And then would it become at the expense of Billy? And then where do we go? Andre Billy and Hun scrum and off. either Grant or Kubis Rana, yeah. right? So I think that's sort of why my thinking would be a five three. Um, and then you got Dion Faree. You know, we can sort of do that roving role yeah. should it happen where. Bongi presenting his 80. So I'm well, I'm more interested. Do we go 5 3 or 6 2? I don't think we're going to go 7 1, my personal opinion. Why the delayed start? I, is it mind game? So it's just an analysis also. I think it's also different. You give the team out early, they can analyze you a lot more. Now the French, are, you leave but them you know, guessing. The, the Springboks core strength has been. Listen, this is our team. This is our team. And listen, what you're going to do. World Cup and final 2019. World Cup 2019. 2019. This is how we're going to play it. If you're good enough, good on you. But I mean, the one surprise. <laughs> no, was, it is. This is a surprise, of course. No, but we, yeah, we thought of the team would be out by even mm -hmm. yeah, today. today. So yeah. the one thing we were probably in the All Black game pre-tournament, the New Zealand game, where we were expecting a 6-2, and it became a 7-1. That yeah. was that was that was the first no, time ever. That, yeah. First time ever. Do you think there's but, any chance of an 8-0? Never. <laughs> I mean, at the end of the day, I've been saying to people as well, you know, with South Africans, it doesn't matter. It's, it's all eight anyway, because yeah. they can all play forwards and backs. They're all big and strong. So, yeah, you know. The problem is scrum off. That my only, oh, Chilin can go scrummy. If we go nah, eight. Look, I don't, no, we're not going to go eight. <laughs> but yeah, we're so selection, go eight. selection but wise, let's, kill, let's kill that chat there. <laughs> we're not, we're not, we're not going to go. I think the longer it goes on, that I'm with Brian on, in terms of Le Box starting, yeah. because I think the French will be assuming, okay, Pollard's back in there now, yeah. and they're going to just try and play a more limited game rather than a more open game that is the perception of Le Box. Yeah. But uh, I, I think that means, you know, this delay means Le Box going to start. He's, he's had faith since yeah. the start of the tournament, hasn't he? We also saw in Marseille last year for the 
Autumn Nation series. That was a cracking game. We it was saw, a great game. We saw Damon Willems, uh, you know, really getting that back line going, option taking out of the 20. I could, I could Remember never the French have also, they've got the, they're different because they've got that long kicking game. So the fullback, yeah, it yeah. does give you time to counter if no, the back three yeah. drop, the centre drops, and you've got opportunity so, to have a go. From the, you can launch from the back And easy. we actually played brilliant rugby that yeah. day, right? Uh, we also yeah. got 100% kicking at polls on Marseille yeah. after the dismal performance in, in yeah. Dublin uh, a week prior. So, 6-2-5-3, I don't know. Um, I reckon Marnie's got the inside track. Um, I don't know, Lukanyo, um, is that a spicy? Oh, yeah, you forget about that, yeah. Is that a spicy, yeah. you know, does JC Creel deserve it? Does Lukanyo and Moody? So, it's fascinating. Is it mind games? Yeah. I think a little, a little bit. Some, someone mentioned something. A, a, a mate of mine that watches football, he said, why don't rugby teams announce their team two hours? You announce a squad, but you announce your 23, two hours before the game. Mm. So it, it creates debate. It creates it, Then people actually watch it more. Because football, you've actually got your squad announcements and then they announce the starting 11 yeah. before the match. Mm. I'd love it. Rugby, rugby that same way. You say, I listen, guys, you squad... Two hours before the match, you have to announce your starting team. Or even just when they run out to warm up, yeah. suddenly they've got the numbers on. Think yeah. how many, the like, crowd coming in. Who, who's going to start? Who's yeah. going to start? Maybe. Great. Great. Bad, great, a, great fan engagement. Yeah. For fan that, engagement, for chat, for speculation, to build up the game, to create interest. Two hours before the game, squad. I, I, two hours before the game, you announce your, I, your starting team. Jimmy, don't sell your IP on, on international TV. Eh? Don't sell your IP. <laughs> it was for it. my idea. You know, Charge just for it. Charge talking for it. Them, Hopefully the lawyers are watching. Or Black Island. Yeah, what do you say? I mean, I've, I've tried to be objective. I've tried to carve out a niche for myself as an objective Kiwi. There aren't yeah. too many of them. Um, I get in <laughs> or South Africans. I get in trouble with music. No, that's right. And that's good. That's that's yeah. the passion and stuff like that. But I think in this week as well, you know, it's it's more, we know we're up against it. You don't too often see All Blacks coming in as um, as real underdogs, yeah. And, yeah. and they really are. And for good reason. Ireland's been fantastic, as you know. They're, I think they're the smartest team at, at, in the world Clinical at reacting place. on the field and at, adapting yeah. what they're doing they're fantastic they've been they're the form team they are of course yeah. they are so i think if you play this game um 10 times i think probably ireland would expect to win at seven yeah but you know that there's that 20 or 30 percent chance and and we know the all blacks are have been looking to peak for this time of the year this is not to excuse them against the box in twickenham yeah. or against france in the opening match but in both those games they were right in it in the first half. They were yeah. holding on well on defence. Yeah. They got into the French 22 really they well. They just well. couldn't yeah. punch and get the points. So yeah. they were right in the game for the first 40. They got run away from in the second half, which is unusual because the blacks normally, normally pride themselves on their fitness. Yeah. Yeah. So I really wondered if at the time, without finding excuses, they were in a, a bit of a loading phase yeah. physically, whatever that means. I've yeah. just heard the word. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what I'm talking about great. strength <laughs> and conditioning. They were in a loading you know, phase. Maybe, maybe, maybe <laughs> I reckon they might have been there with a view to all they want to do they, they get through the first game they know look we, we perform against Italy it doesn't matter that first result yeah. like Brian says you've got to beat win three big games yeah. so they're going look win or lose that first game doesn't matter if we win it's a bonus yeah. maybe but who knows who we'll get from the other pool yeah. so let's get through that let's have our um, week off and then we're right into it and we're peaking for middle of October onwards and I, 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 I'm I like clutching that. to that what, like what, that what big matchups I mean are you guys looking forward to this weekend uh, across all four yeah, across yeah Ooh, we'll so, talk, we'll so, talk the other so, side. I mean, I'm, the, the games down there, I down south. I am obviously from a winger perspective. I think I called so, Damon Pinot to break the eight. So the only way I see him breaking the eight is if France beat the box this yeah. weekend. I think he's been sublime uh, throughout this World Cup. He just does the certain freedom he plays with, freedom, it. Yeah. the the joy that he brings, yeah. and it it comes with absolute class, right? Yeah. He the the deception in terms of his pace, his acceleration, his ability to offload. I mean, he's, I mean, he, he kicks better than me off the shin, but you know, his, <laughs> his little cross kick uh, last week the was shink. the shink, the shink, <laughs> the, shink. the shink, off. I think it perfected that, 100% perfected that. Um, most can come for lessons. I, I can teach you that. I mean, I've literally kicked the ball out the 22, right? Like, Scott Berg and John de Villiers will never forget me and Gio Applon and John de Jong are going to yeah. rip me to pieces forever. But out on the wing, I think that's a, a really exciting place for me. Yeah. Um, they, do they go with the Gabon Villiers um, for this weekend or not? I think he's sort of been waiting in the wings. And we have a very young French winger that... He plays. Who would you go with? I mean, Villiers has been sort of the yeah. chosen guy, but then they've brought yeah, in sort of Biel Biarre and yeah, it's kind of exciting. Yeah. He's a real creator, isn't he? Yeah, I, that's... I, I and mean, that's a conundrum that a coach would love to have. Yeah. I think he's potentially Pip Gabillier, um, at this stage, just because of his last two games. And he's got something different. But for me, Damien Pinot against Curtly Orenser, two guys that are very different in skill set. Yeah. 
but to that are exciting, yeah. extremely it, it, exciting. You, I mean, out of all the matchups, do you think it will be high scoring? Uh, the, the it won't be. I mean, weather wise, it's apparently going to be a little bit wet up until Saturday. Yeah. Uh, which means it's. Oh, we're not be, used to this, dude. No, it's been the last we've five been weeks. We've been doing the show in shorts and <laughs> the last sunglasses. Five weeks have been incredible, right? Woke up this morning. Look yeah. at this. Kiwis are all out rain dancing in <laughs> the streets. You know, it's down it comes, down it comes. But like, look, it doesn't seem to make too much difference these yeah. days yeah. with these guys. The skill level is so high, isn't it? Their management yeah. of, of the game. You know, yes, it might be a bit greasy on top, a bit more, you know, kicks, the grubber kicks, mm. particularly with those ferocious defenses coming up. But their skills and their handling, I think, if they're opportunities they see they're going to look to exploit them yeah. aren't they and you know through the hands They've, they're so skilled these players these days mm, no it's insane All Blacks um, selection look I suppose it's, it's pretty settled there's Frizzell needs to fire I think if, if he plays he, he's crucial um, mm. a Black Adder maybe on the bench because he can yeah, cover eight I think so I think just that abrasive nature yeah, of yeah. Fr Frizzell's been big he's got that great combination with yeah. Aaron Smith mm. you know they play together at the Highlanders and Super yeah. Rugby Smith always finds him as his bailout option they they know to track one another and yeah. Frizzell offers that a little bit extra in terms of punch they've got you know Scott Barrett who can yeah. hit the line yeah. hard Frizzell's just a little bit something extra and he's mm. going to knock out two or three tacklers yeah. who won't then be able to try and steal so either he goes over the line or he, he, he takes out three defenders straight away and still gets the ball back so he's important I'm with Brian as well out on the wings James Lowe yeah. presumably up against uh, Will Jordan, it will be Will Jordan. And, wow. you know James Lowe as, as a New Zealander yeah. Bundy Aki as yeah. well how much is in their mind every time they play the All Blacks that they didn't get a look in a national selection when mm. they were back in New Zealand how yeah. much is it we've got a point to prove as well and yeah. you can't go too much individual on that yeah. but I think Aki and James Lowe are big parts of the Irish team sparking things at different times just on that David, I've got a, I've got David a, McKenzie yeah, Does that's he find yeah, a place. Does he find a place? Is, uh, yeah. Where do you fit him in there? Well, that's the other. I was going to say when I mentioned Scott Barrett, where do you fit Barrett, Whitelock, Retallick, and Frizzell? And they can't all start, obviously. And same thing with Barrett B. Um, uh, Moonga and and D Mac. I, I don't know. I mean, D Mac has been extraordinary. Every time you think, gee, teams are really going to analyse him, they're going to find a way to shut him down yeah. eventually. He comes out with something else extraordinary. Yeah, You've got to have him in the mix. I yeah. think you do. You still have. I think you still I think have him, him on the bench because I think yeah. I think yeah. Bowden Barrett's still a massive part of that leadership group. So yeah. what he brings in the intangibles on the field is still huge. And I think Moonga is still the most complete of the fly yeah. halves that we've got with the All Blacks. So if I mean you've been in Paris for a while, so if the Springboks win and the All Blacks win, where do we celebrate? Where, what are the good spots? Here? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> That's an important well, I've, question. I've this. been threatening to get everyone to Bugsy's for a long time. Bugsy's one of those great things. It's it's got a nice. French history behind it, but it is uh, kind of Anglo-owned and yeah. run with Alan there, who's fantastic host. Uh, they've got great French food and drink, but they've got all the matches on with English commentary as okay, well. Yeah. So I think, uh, you know, Bugsy's is the go-to, but there are so many good options around Paris as well. You've got that one that you'll love, I'm sure, Shimmy. No scrum, no win. <laughs> <laughs> but Shimmy, with all the harvesting you've been done, surely you can no, stick no, no, the boys Brian. for Capital okay. No, no, no. You, you owe us for what you did to me and Marshy the other night. Yeah, but surely, well, I mean, you've been harvesting so much. Uh, yeah. I've successfully <laughs> avoided Marshy. I'm, I'm looking forward to catching up with him, but I'm also dreading it as well. I mean, this, this tournament has been a wonderful nine months, hasn't it? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> the amount of... Uh, Oh, it's, if the players of today, I always say it, if the players of today think it's a tough tournament to play and train in, wait till they get to the, the <laughs> yeah. retired do, do, do stage. Do our job. Oh. Do what we do. Uh, hashtag still think we've got it. Arduous. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and there, there's a lot of people. Uh, Big Vic is in town. John Smith's in town now. In town. Everyone, there's a lot of guys Rick's flying in. So Bugsy's it is, eh? I think so, yeah. Do oh, we, do, do we, you can't go wrong Do we here. use curtains <laughs> at the door? What do we? Yeah, just say. There's a, there's a, I think I believe there might be a little area set aside. It's not yeah. VIP area, not like what you guys no. are used to. But, um, it's not VIP. We're, we're talking about. VIP. Um, what's the place you took us to, bro? Cafe de la We had to pay to sit outside. No, but shimmy. You, no, we no, had to no. pay to sit okay, outside. So, so it's nice listen, when he tells you once you're sitting down. Listen, no, no, guys. No, no, by the no, way, no, no. you get you, so they, they charge. No, they said they want to go for dinner. Maybe have a bit of a a bit of a jaw or two. I'm like, okay, guys, it's Sunday night in Paris. With, like, wait, also, with, with Marshy or jaw or two? No, well, a jaw or two. Let's be okay, respectful. Okay. A bottle or two. <laughs> when, where, where do you want to go? So I, I, I'm expecting. I, I dress up to the tea, just because as you do, right? You, He's wearing a jacket standards. and a polo neck. Standards, right? He's standards. Yeah, you know, you just go with standards. You look decent. Yeah. Um, and I said, like, Shimmy, you know, you can actually stay at my place. I'm literally right around the corner. He used to come in shorts. Oh, really? <laughs> shorts and slops. I'm like, guys, <laughs> seriously, standards. You're there in your bell staff. But you're all dressed up beautiful. All amazing. Yeah. I'm like, how do I? How do I get? So, and then we had to pay extra because they were in shorts. <laughs> it wasn't for the shorts. Why it wasn't for the we shorts? Jeez, note to self. We, to, uh, we, 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 we almost got kicked out, actually. The bouncers there said, no, no, you guys, they wouldn't let us in. So no, Brian O'Banners, yeah, oh, come in, come in, come, come sit down there. 
some of the some of the infrastructure here doesn't seem set up for what we know as South Africans and New Zealanders getting together, or worse still, English, Irish, and Welsh coming no, in and yeah. just like locusts, yeah. and the beer just drains out of the town. I'm not sure they were quite. They must have had English over here for years. The French, they must have been aware that no. there was going to be a huge no. demand placed on the airport, the passport yeah. control at the airport. A disaster. They got to improve yeah. that before the Olympic Games, but also they're yeah they're they're, they're stocking up of the beer and they're, they're getting oh, they're running the, the out, pints and out. Well, it's just coming out slower. Yeah. I think they've just been absolutely blown away by the <laughs> intensity of the demand. Talk, <laughs> talk about the English, the other side. Um, England playing Fiji. Fiji. Ooh. What's your, what's your guy? Yeah, I mean we a lot of we saying Fiji could Fiji's everybody could do something team. special. No, Fiji's everybody's second team. I think that last round of pool games was exactly the kick up the ass that both teams needed. The yeah. Fiji. We got to admit that Portugal win, phenomenal. The scenes on arriving back in Portugal this week mm. is just, yeah, it's, it's incredible good, yeah. to see what a sport, and they went back as heroes. And I don't, yes, they won that last game, but I don't think it was just that last game's winning ability. It was their performances throughout the pool stages. And kudos to each and every person that's played an impact to where you know, Portugal are. We've seen the likes of a Georgia beat Wales. You know, how does that continue? Fiji doing so well this tournament. The kick up the ass that both teams needed. Argentina, you know, it's just Argentina still have to. They feel yeah. they're in the in the in the quarters, yeah. but they they haven't played. No, they haven't. Yeah. Um, but yeah, then sorry, England against Samoa. Also Samoa, unlucky. I think. Oh, some yeah. interesting calls. Yeah, interesting calls. Appreciating. Um, but I think a, a game that now I played Marseille, two thousand and seven, after England. That was Fiji. Yeah, England beat, beat Australia. Beat, yeah. beat Australia. France beat New Zealand. I'm not gonna lie to you, that Velodrome Stadium was ninety nine point nine 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 percent Fijian. Yeah, twenty points all with twenty minutes to go. We were tackling ghosts. Like it was, they the ball playing ability was just ridiculous. Um, and I think we hopefully we'll see something special because the weather's much different down south at the moment, right? When you talked about the crowd lifting, say yeah. for the French, but the <coughs> Fijians just... Oh. And I think it's really tough to gauge where the teams were at in that last round mm. because you're right, England was a little bit underwhelming, yeah. Argentina a little bit underwhelming, Wales has looked the goods, yeah. Yeah. but will they be looking there's the a certain energy about, the, Yeah, There's uh, a certain energy about the Wales. Yeah. Defense, uh, yeah. that the Argentina will bring. So it's great. And I'm with you. I think people saying it's lopsided or whatever, it doesn't matter. We've got four... Great. Four quarterfinals that can conceivably go either way. Yeah. Tight matches or so much interest in it. I think it's fantastic. After that, we'll deal with whatever happens in the yeah. semis. But for the moment, four cracking games where even the, the neutral observer, I think, will enjoy all games. So Wales, Argentina, where, which, where do you see that going? So it's probably, it's, it's hard to call that one now. Every quarterfinal is hard to call. Yeah. I, in my respectful, emotional unbiased feelings. I think Wales has been the surprise package of the tournament, right? Yeah. To have gone unbeaten in the pool stages, scoring lots of tries. Especially you look where Wales, the they lost to Georgia. Welsh, right? mm. Well, not just that, they lost to Georgia in November last year. Italy. Uh, Italy, they yeah. lost to Georgia as well in the Automation Series. Yeah, yeah, they lost to Italy. Italy in the, in the Six yeah. Nations. Yeah, Georgia, Six Nations, Georgia, yeah. they lost in November. Yeah. Italy in, in this year's Six Nations. Alan Jones retired, Justin Tipperick retired, Ken Owens, you know, couldn't make the World Cup. All the leadership core. So Warren Gatlin's done something amazing. To them, have beaten Fiji, Australia to top the group as well as they've done. Some youngsters coming through, someone like Lewis Rees-Samet, showing the potential everyone's talked about. Um, Argentina, I feel, have a game in them. that We have yet to see the Argentinian side yeah. that have beaten North Africa, have beaten New Zealand, have beaten Australia. They've got good players. They've, they've been together for a long um, time. They've been to Pablo Matera, unfortunately, now not available. Um, Pulled his yeah. hammy last week, which is, uh, I mean, that grant, the grant that and he they brings. they need him. They need him. <laughs> grant that he brings. But again, a game that, could mm. go either way, which I think yeah. is brilliant. That's actually what you wanted at a World Cup, you know, quarterfinal stage. I was excited with how Wales, have, considering what their form mm. was like, and they've taken some time to get used to Gatland again. Yeah. And I think that shows how rash a decision it was, regardless of the coaching, the personnel mm. with Australia, whether it was Eddie or Dave mm. Rennie. But the, chain, the change that came that close with only a handful of games yeah. of preparation, they were still in a bit of a find themselves mm. mode, and it, it backfired on them. Wales got through that mm. and are now on the up, and it's great to see where they weren't getting the ball so much to the, mm. the excitement of uh, Reese Zammett, Dyer, uh, Adams, mm. Liam Williams yeah. last year in November and in the Six Nations. Mm. This tournament, they've been able to do that. Yeah. Plus, they've shored up their defence, which was porous. And that's sure. coming from me. That's rich to talk about <laughs> horrific <laughs> defence. But trust me, it was, as you've, you've seen. Yeah. And they've shored that up as well. 
in the on the flip side for Argentina, Michael Check has got form at building a team mm. to peak at the right time. See, Czech, Czech the Czech World Cup, you, yeah. 2015 World Cup. Mm. Look at where the Australia Wallabies came to, yeah. and Argentina. We know they've got it in them. They still haven't shown Agreed. their best rugby. Yeah. Whether they'll have the attacking ability to score enough points against Wales is probably the question, because Wales, you know, has been used to in the you know in the last year or so conceding points. Yeah. Argentina can shut them down. Yeah. Can they can they actually score enough points against them to put the pressure on? That, that's the check away there, isn't it? That's mm. his position based. Have a go. Yeah. Try to score four or five tries. You know, if they score two or three, you've won the game. You know, that's 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 the way they're gonna go. So yeah. that's a yeah, key that's a, it's, it's an interesting tussle. Yeah, it's interesting what Scott Brits was saying also with obviously with England. Oh, saying, he's, yeah, he's gone back. He was in Marseille. I don't know. I think I think he's going back. Right, I'm not okay. sure. Okay. But he was saying with England, obviously that with the SNC pushing them to peak for this weekend, up, up for the next three games, mm. you know. So sometimes they might be winning, but not playing as well. But okay. they've also probably trained quite hard that week. Yeah. And they know they're going to win. Respectfully speaking to the other teams, but knowing that by the time you get to the to the playoff stages, you want you physically in good yeah. condition and everybody ready to fire. Although I mean the way they. Won that first game against Argentina, you know, 14 men yeah. for, for 70 odd minutes. You know, it, well, that was the George Fortier. It was, but, yeah, that's, but you talk yeah. about the SNC, the peaking. Yeah. I mean, to go an extra level for such a long period of time in the first game of the tournament, yeah. if you're peaking for like that, showed some great prowess in yeah. terms of the skill set. So, I honestly, it's four cracking quarterfinals. Like mm. England, while we're on England, mm. the Farrell Ford debate. Tulang debate. You can't have Farrell Ford. I don't think it's worked as significantly well as it did in 2019. You know, Owen Farrell's a class player. He's become England's top point scorer yeah. of all times, overtaking Johnny Captain, Wilkinson. Absolute legend. He's a legend of the game. He, he's, he's ruthless in his attitude and you know, sometimes the, the stick he gets is maybe a little bit unfair. He sometimes also brings it upon himself yeah. because of his actions. Look, he's not pulling zap signs at the, at the crowd. No. No, I mean, he's never done that, right? He's never done that. I, I, I probably yet. <laughs> not yet. I, I probably can't talk about Owen Farrell because I dived when he didn't touch me um, in the Sar in the Saracens Toulon final in 20, uh, 2014. So, um, yeah, I'm not going to speak badly about it. Because we, we, funny enough, we spoke about this the first show we did in Marseille because mm. Ford had just played the yeah. opening game and shot mm. the lights out. Farrell was still injured. Yeah. And, like, what happens when, Far mm. when Farrell comes back? Mm. Now, Tulangi... You know, these guys are good with a big inside center. They're very good. So, Borthwick's going to have, well, Steve. Steve Massive decision yeah, yeah. Massive decision make. Yeah. I, I, it's, listen, classy players. What, 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 right. I, I, think, I think Farrell brings a lot of leadership and experience to the team. Yeah. And I think having him in the group does add that. Again, it's an but intangible for us watching. Like there we go. So, yeah. Yeah, well, yeah. It's captain, right? <laughs> it sums it up. But, yeah. but he does bring that, yeah. that yeah. aside from the captaincy role, just brings that knowledge and, and on the field. I feel he's like a little bit in between what a what a fly half and, and an inside centre have developed into at this point in yeah, time and yeah. in this tournament. Yeah. I don't think he has the same feel for the game as George Ford, the same yeah. sort of finesse at 10, and he, he clearly doesn't have the same... I mean, he's a tough, abrasive character, yeah. but he doesn't have the same bulk as and, and blockbusting ability as yeah. Tuilangi does yeah. at 12. Yeah. So I think you have him on the bench, but I think my, if I was selecting, I'd be having Ford and Tuilangi and Joe Marshall at centre, you know? Yeah, wow. okay. Because wow. it's interesting, because Farrell's also the captain, I think George Ford is a, is a guy that wants to be the general and be in charge. Mm. But when you've got the captain and thing, you're calling moves just outside you, as Flaw, if you actually want to be It inhibits general. you. It's yeah. tough. It's like having a really strong character at nine, like, like for example, a Justin Marshall. <laughs> it's, a, it's great for the team. It's tough for a 10. It's <laughs> tough. And it's a, that's a tough 10 years of marriage that's uh <laughs> holy heck well, so, and, 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 and you're just talking about on the field stuff right yeah, that's, that's, <laughs> no, yeah, it was, it was the same as a marriage we never had sex <laughs> <laughs> and argued every day uh, so what what are you guys most looking forward to this this weekend Oh, I mean, there's a lot it's a, to it's look a, for. This, for me, this almost, it feels like a semi-final weekend almost. Yeah, you know, it, it, it does, it's got it, that feel it about it. It definitely yeah. has that feel about it. Double semi-final weekend. Yeah, it's it's exactly. It's incredible. Well, I can't lie. And I buggies. can't wait for New Zealand yeah. to, to show how well their preparation has gone to have them really hitting their strides here against the world's number one ranked team. Mm. Yeah. But then in saying that, I'm, I'm equally excited about watching, you know, two teams where I don't have any skin in the game, whether it be Wales, Argentina or England, Fiji, obviously Fiji, everyone's second yeah. team, as you say, I love to see that. But, you know, for the tournament, it's important that England and, and France go as far as possible as well. Yeah. yeah. I don't, that's not thanks. to, no, you know. Give that, give that, give that jersey back. Give that jersey back. Give that jersey back. 
can I have this no, one? <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, Sunday night, to, fin to round off the weekend, current world champions against the host nation. It's honestly, it's good to better, to better, to better. It's like unbelievable. And, and dream, and dream weekend. Just, just on sort of the crowd experience, I think that's yeah. massive. What have you planned or what have you asked the stadium announcer to play should New Zealand beat the Irish? I mean, we have, we've had zombie bellowed out at the stadium, um, karaoke. We're going to hear it again. That's, that's, that's the song of the World Cup. It is, well, it's Iron Song of the World Cup, yeah. right? It hasn't been played at any other stadium to that capacity. So, I mean, have you sort of put in a no, request? That, what, I mean, what's, is, what's your what, go-to karaoke song, Mertz? That would be insult to injury yeah. for Ireland beating New Zealand for me because for years, and I had to admit this on Stan Sport back in Australia, I didn't even know what the words were. I thought it was call me, call me. <laughs> and so I've looked at all these Instagram posts with people saying zombie, woohoo, and I'm like, Hang on a minute. <laughs> so that will be embarrassing for me. So yeah. I, if Ireland beats New Zealand, there we go. I'm disappointed. And then they start singing zombie. And I'm like, there's the, the idiot, idiotic lyrics again that I didn't realize. So, um, what song do you go? What song do you I go? I don't know what New Zealand if, if goes the for. On. Yeah, what song do you I go? I mean, go? you know, Seems. most of the crowd would do a haka, I'm sure. Yeah. yeah. Um, they'll you rip, rip one be, out. Do you think there'd be quite a few New Zealanders in the, in the crowd? Well, I mean, I'm hoping that the reason why we saw so many South Africans at Twickenham a few weeks back was yeah. because all the New Zealanders had saved their money to buy tickets for here. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I'm hoping we get a few in here. So much green last yeah. week in the Ireland Scotland, Scotland game, game, wasn't yeah. it? Yeah. Massive yeah. amounts well, of Well, the drum up the Springbok crowd also. It was that weekend as well. You know what I'm looking forward to most about the weekend? Getting to about 1 a.m. on Monday morning and realizing, okay, Okay, all the all the work for the weekend and all the watching of rugby, while it's been fantastic, it's over. You can yeah. have a couple of days, have a sleep in or something like that. You might not. You've probably got gigs on Mondays, Tuesdays as have well. You know, you, some have, of us don't have that. Have you not have been, been booked for Monday? You've definitely been booked for Monday. Stands for squash <laughs> <laughs> No, I've got nothing Monday. I am uh, don't like Mondays, so I'm just relaxing at home. Because the song. You haven't given us a song yet, mate. No, 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 what, what, what did the New Zealand what, song? What, what was a great song in New Zealand? I mean, what's... Well, there's uh, Dave Dobbins normally seen as our, our, our uh, national sort of anthem, our unofficial anthem with Loyal, which yeah. is pretty good. It's a hard one to get everyone chanting alongside. There's a yeah, fair bit before, a sing -along, you, yeah. before you get to, uh, it's a fairly well, somber sort of a song no, as well, but Loyal's pretty good because, you know, New Zealand might show the supporters as well that, uh, you know, they've had to stick with the team. They've had results in the last year that have been tough to, yeah. tough to digest. Yeah, I, I find it weird. Yeah. With us. I find it strange. A lot of people are have, have writing the All Blacks off for this game. They're, they're a good, they're a good mm. team. They've got no, good okay, players, no, and if no, they hit their stride, they they, no, they, they are, are to stop. No, they are quality, and they they they're still in the top four teams in the world, right? Yeah. So they haven't lost, but also admittedly, it's been the worst run of an yeah. All Black. It's, they've had a lot of firsts, like the statistically, yeah. the last four years has yeah. had a lot of firsts, or the yeah. last five, six. It's been a lot of firsts. So it's not with disrespect; it's purely given on the fact that Ireland beat them. Yeah. This year, well, in, in a home series for some ever, it's got to do the fact that South Africa scored you know, 35 unanswered points before they started scoring points. Yeah. Yes, five weeks ago. Lost got to Argentina. Lost to Argentina, lost to France in the opening game. So there's a lot of change going on in New Zealand, and we've heard the various elements of what that potential disjointedness, you know, the Crusaders have been going so well Super Rugby wise. There just hasn't been that parity from what we've seen from a Super Rugby perspective, mm. you know, taken into the All Blacks. So yeah. it's not disrespecting, it's just given the pure statistics. It's logic. Yeah. On on current form, deservedly Ireland are the favourites. Yeah. But like, like we say about South Africa, well, it's, beware, not, it's not a done deal though. Beware no. writing off the box. Yeah. Yeah. Beware it's writing not a done deal. Yeah. Don't write off anyone. Yeah. That's, the, that's the key, isn't it? I, <laughs> what, I mean, what, New Zealand, what's the fallout like? Though? I mean, Marshy's told us some some terrible stories about when you guys have been knocked out of World Cups, etc. So it's a dark, well, dark, dark place to go. I yeah. guess uh, in a way we were lucky to only go out in the semi-finals in 99 because we still had to stay on for the next week. Difficult though yeah. it was to play in the third and fourth game against South Africa. Yeah, yeah. That's that what Brenton and Pulse called yeah, the try, yeah, the no, chip yeah, and chase. Yeah. I still that remember led the, to, led to an, an horrendous night out for South Africans and New Zealanders as we had to go to the final dinner after the final oh. where everyone's celebrating the French and the Australians and South Africans and New Zealanders were all in the corner having a few drinks and um, and stuff like that, trying to trying to look happy at least yeah. for the event. Um, but worse was to come in 2007 when they went up because no further games after the quarterfinals for the, the yeah. quarterfinal losers. Nice. You're on the next flight out. And they were out and on the way through because a lot of New Zealanders thought, you know, we'll just go over for the semis and finals. Oh, and wow. on the way through LA airport, apparently, the All Blacks were going one way. Through the glass, you could see the New Supporters. Zealand tour groups going to get on the flight to go to, the, <laughs> to fly to <laughs> London. I think they were trying to keep their eyes brutal. sort of averted, That's you know. That so, is brutal. You know, it happens to everyone. We've now seen Australia go out for the first time yeah, in man. pool stages. England had that hosting the tournament in 2015. Yeah, that's true. Actually, it yeah, goes, look at other... what, it goes around and it comes yeah. around, and you know what? Um, 
You look to the future, don't you? you look to the next game. Yeah. All Blacks up against the number one team in the world. It's going to be a great lost. weekend. You know, they're in the game. And so they on eight, they say, 17, 17. Is it 17? No. 17. Record is 18. So, so this is to break the record for Alan. No, this is to equal Sorry, the record. To equal the record. So, so then, yeah. obviously, if wow. they do equal, it's 18. You feel if they do get through an easier semi final, automatically. Well, it's going to be history if they win this game because the first ever Irish side to go past quarter final. But then, you know, on an opportunity to win 19 games in a row. Do with 20. There's a lot on them. That's a lot. Of, that's a lot of pressure. <laughs> that is a lot but of pressure. Remember, a lot of, of pressure. pressure. <laughs> but it's Thursday. Tree turtle. Go find me. Tree turtle. Room tree tree tree. I mean, Tormat Island is probably the. Am I right in saying probably the greatest Irish team? Yeah, 100. Yeah. Uh, to, or again on stats. Yeah, yeah, right? on yeah. But purely on stats. It has to be yeah. First ever series win in in New Zealand. 17 consecutive games in a row. One Grand Slam, Six Nations, like. Johnny takes in the highest test scorer of all time for Ireland overtaking Ronan Nogara. Everywhere in their whole team, they've got players who, while you might auto not automatically pick them mm. as the best player in their position in the world, they're one, two or three mm. in every position. And on top of that, they get more out of their ability than, mm. and that's the great thing about their team culture, yeah. gets yeah. more out of the individual part, gets more yeah. out of the collective than mm. the individual parts. And it's and you take got your the head off. current world player of the year, Josh van der Fleer, um, in the yeah. team. You got so that's starting to pop up now. Who's World Player of the Year? Ooh, you, big talks, eh? It's difficult. Well, you, you're in the inner circle there. I'm not in the inner circle. Yes, you are. You're in the inner circle. I've been disbanded down uh, one or two levels. Um, I know John Smith, Richard McCall, there were some chats in, in the car last night in London about any names? teams. Uh, is, it, is Player of the Year just from, do they look at World Cup or the, no, just the full season? No, so Six the Nations. Year, okay. um, so you, you'd, you'd feel there would be a couple of Irish names. Caelan Doris, for me, has yeah. been immense throughout the season. Uh, yeah. Both Six Nations. Leinster obviously didn't win the, the Champions Cup, uh, didn't progress in the URC, but internationally, Caelan Doris has been amazing. Johnny hasn't actually played that many games, didn't play many games in the Six yeah. Nations, so you know, it would have been the reckoning. Anton Dupont, I mean, uh, yes, he's missed these last two games, but he's just he's, he's a phenomenal specimen. Uh, Damien Pinot uh, has just been beautiful, scintillating to watch. You know, top try scorer in the Six Nations. Uh, been going really well, moving to Bordeaux. Thomas Ramos, um, in terms of the accurate kicking, the comfort with which he plays the game, I think this is brilliant. So, yeah, I think there's a few players there. So, 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 I think Malcolm Marks, hectically unlucky. Yeah, shame. Man. He was going so well. Yeah, it can um, be such a painful game also. It can be a uh, cheese. Um, you think? But someone like yeah. Kane and Moody, particularly yeah. in the mix for Young Player of the Year, uh, yeah. which I think is, is a. I'm trying to think who are the youngsters that have popped up this. It's only Kane. Well, Kane, Kane, like, and, Kane actually started in. He played lot. Yeah, last year in Australia. Australia, that, in Australia. Yeah. So I'm not quite sure in terms of the World Rugby regulations what new player of the year or mm. newcomer of the year timelines are. Mm. Um, yeah, there's, there's not many. Ange Capuccio, obviously, one young player of the year. It's last dynamic, year. yeah. Very dynamic. Uh, but I mean, Italy were as disappointing as. No forwards. Anything. No forwards there. No props. Tight props. So Kalen Doris, uh, I reckon, as yeah. the forwards. Um, Van der Fleer. No, I don't think Josh has gone. Which to the tighties levels. have stood out? Which which tight forwards would you say? Mitz? No, no. <laughs> so Mark, so I, whoa, 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 whoa. I hey, mentioned Mark. Hey, I mentioned yeah, Mark. Okay, you know, you know, you're unfortunately you injured. And you, um, and you went to your old school also. <laughs> my old school, my school. Side note. Side note. Cares. Red, red days, guys. Um, uh, oof, again, I, I'm not a forward. I mean, you should yeah. be the one calling You know who you think up front's been, been going well. Yeah, it's, it's a tricky one because. I mean, you look at the Springbok pack, which have been, they've been very dominant, but mm. they also, it's seven one splits. You know, a okay, lot of Eben's, guys. Eben's name can always yeah, be. Eben, Eben, Eben you can, can always, always throw be, his name um, there. He's, can always he's the there. one constant there. All his grafting hard. Peter mm. Steph's playing well, but oh, obviously. Peter Steph is really yeah, playing well. He's playing good He's playing really well. You know? Black's Black's Herber has just come no, 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 don't well. throw the New Zealanders in there, mate. You've, you've avoided them completely up to now, don't worry. No, 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 no. Will Jordan. I think he's been a good yeah. performer. He's been phenomenal. Yeah. Even when the All Blacks have lost, he's, he's yeah. still been standout, scores a lot of tries. Mm -hmm. In the forwards, hard, I, I mean, biased, of course, with Severe? the Crusaders angle with Jordan as well, but uh, Sam Whitelock as well, who's, yeah. you know, phenomenal every game. He's just got we such high standards, consistent. All Black of all time. Um, sorry? We become the most test-capped yeah. All Black of all but time. But he's just so consistent I mean, with his many, performances. He, he was, he's two World Cups, eh? Two World Cups. Double he's World Cups. Yeah, so 11 and 15. And, so how, many be, one, and he, how many trophies with the Crusaders? Well, you must have all thousands. Them. No, you were all of them. Thousands. You'd have all of them, right? And rugby championships, he must have won. He no, must have won. All of them. Yeah. yeah. What have they won since 16 or 17? They won, they won it this uh, year, last year. Yeah. Six or seven. Yeah. He must seven have close row, to so. 
number of trophies. Um, that must be 50 or close to 15, yeah. between 15 and Aldrich, 20 trophies. French. Aldrich. Aldrich's yeah, been good. Yeah, yeah. Aldrich's been good. Charles Olivon. Olivon so as well. I like Olivon. I like oh, Olivon. I, I think there's a, a number player, of players yeah. that you can sort of throw throw in the mix. Um, the the a very difficult thing, and we can say it on global television, not one person is going to pick the same team not one person or group of people collective. It's a yeah. democracy, right? It's always, always gonna, be a debate. It's going to be subjective. Look, 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 a team was sent out the other day, team of the World Cup so far, and there wasn't one player from the Southern Hemisphere. Serious? Yeah, I looked at that. I said, this is a joke. This, well, you know, you, you, I was laughed out. I was like, come on now. They're making a big thing serious. about four Northern Hemisphere teams winning the pools. But yeah. it's not like there's any sort of collegiality between these Northern yeah. Hemisphere teams. Yeah. France and England have hated themselves on a deep-rooted <laughs> level for a thousand I mean, years. They've years. You know, hated war. one another. You know, the, the, the Welsh and the Irish, do you think they are, and the Scottish, do you think they're really rejoicing that England won their pool? <laughs> not a chance. Forget the hemispheres. It's just different teams. No, but this, you know? this, I mean, we've, Southern Hemisphere has been there when we've been top. We've never said, listen, no, the Southern Hemisphere better than No, we have. We don't, we don't no, really no, count. Do no, we no, count no, it? No, no, we have. No, Do we? we? Might have. So, 20, <laughs> okay, maybe. Okay. I've got a hazy memory on that. 2015, all Southern Hemisphere. Did we know we uh, 2015, all Southern Hemisphere semifinals, <laughs> one to four. Was it? Yeah, it yeah, was. 100%. Like, we were riding that wave. And but that, that, at that stage, it's okay. Semifinals is okay. 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 Talking about pool winners. No, but yeah, talking the, about the pool. It's the first time ever that a Southern Hemisphere team hasn't topped the pool. I mean, that is a statement, right? Yep. That is unfortunate. And again, where we go with the global season, I think it's going to play a very important role with where the rugby dominance is, both from a playing as well as a financial perspective. And you almost feel all the parity has shifted up north. Guys, it's been phenomenal. Brian, so it's just last one, Brian. Yes. Good memories for you here. Jesus. Incredible memories. Um, particularly Rugby World Cup wise. Like, I think it's blown away that we get to sit pitch side ahead yeah. of such an epic weekend happening at Rugby's global spectacle, right? I, it's, you want to almost grab a piece of grass and put it in your pocket. Yeah. I know we're not allowed to steal, so we don't gonna we're not gonna advocate for that anyway. But some great oh, memories. I'll take mine <laughs> so out. <please laughs> but, um, Check it out. <laughs> but yeah, some some great memories for me, and I think the stage is set for new memories, you know, new moments to be made for whichever team or players get out here. And it's it's a beautiful surface. The noise in that the stadium is gonna be encompassed with, engulfed with, it's gonna be gladiatorial. Absolutely yeah. gladiatorial this weekend, and I think it's brilliant. It's, it's, a, it's a special place to play rugby. It's the, the All Black Island game. When the All Blacks do that hacker, it's going to be something else. This place is, is going to explode. Yeah, it's going to be electric. All, all four games, like we've said, yeah. are, are, are tight. But the, this one, obviously, as a New Zealander, but I think everyone... And um, half of South rugby Africa. Lovers and, will, and we South Africa. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> but ra rugby lovers will, will yeah. be looking forward to this game here. Like you say, Brian, unbelievable stadium. It's been, you know, they've hosted it so well in terms of the rugby organising committee here yeah. Um, yeah. in France. And yeah. they're a very proud host so it's fantastic i'm glad that this week we don't have to be anti one another you yeah. know it's nice to be friends at least for a week we'll see what happens after that but could be interesting. i don't, interesting. They're, they're, I don't mind who wins out of you guys yeah. we'll i'll be, be impressed before. whoever wins we'll but i'd love to see i'd love to see but you live in you're half south african yeah but i'm applying yeah. for my uh not okay, citizenship okay. maybe here but my long-term <laughs> stay card so uh, who, who, played, who played mertens in invictus Look, they don't even know because it did nothing for Tom his Cruise. career. The poor Wasn't guy. I think they <laughs> they got around Tom the world. I was hoping maybe Wesley Snipes or Denzel, <laughs> Denzel Washington. No chance. No, no, they, they got this poor guy in and it's just killed his career. As much as uh, probably that final itself should have probably killed my career, um, his acting career went uh, But it wasn't very nowhere. much understudy like Matt Damon did with Francois Morgan. Did, yes. with, uh, did, you, was, did you do I, some understudy work I with got you? An, no, I did nothing. I did nothing. Didn't get invited there. I, I had all... <laughs> you, you guys will have played with Epi Taione somewhere. Yeah, the yeah, man yeah, with yeah, more yeah. clubs than he Tiger was Woods. He was John Lomu. No, that was uh, Zach Fianati. Zach Fianati. Okay. Yeah, Zach Fianati, but, okay. uh, but Epi was down there and yeah. he was ringing me up. I was in pre-season training yeah. with racing and he was ringing me up saying, I'm playing uh, Texas Hold'em Poker with Clint Eastwood in between takes. Wow. <laughs> I far out. I didn't get to even ask for a consultancy role. So... <laughs> no, the poor guy got lumbered with uh, with with the role of me, and it, so his career in acting started low and just went went worse, <laughs> unfortunately. Thanks, guys. Um, it's it's going to be an epic weekend. It's it's big. Uh, this is a, a rugby lovers, a sports lovers' dream. Yeah. Um, we'll catch up probably next Tuesday on the box office. Um, I'll let you know who the guests are then. The box office is now closed. Mm -hmm.